Why did I arrive in Oroville? Hmm. I don't know. I ended up here by chance. After May 68 and those traumatic times, we didn't want to think so much, we wanted to do. Donc là, j'ai décidé de partir en septembre 68 par la route. And it was almost like the way just opened. And because the way was opening, I decided to go with the way. You know, life in the West is not, I think, not as exciting as it used to be, you know, because it's not new anymore. On ne construit plus de cité, parce que la cité, elle est construite, c'est l'économie de marché plus un petit peu de démocratie politique. Ça y est, le rêve est fini. This uh, consumerism and capitalism is already running for quite a long time. We don't want to accumulate, we don't want to have power with money, we just want to build this place. The ideal of our river is so high and so far, um, and yet so close, and yet so easy. At least we are not stuck yet. There's still kind of possibilities there that we might still kind of get somewhere. C'est notre vie, c'est construire. Une cité qui s'appelle Euroville, avec toute sa part d'inconnu. But the mother, she said to us, look, please, play. Make mistakes, whatever, but you've got to play. And here's the playground. It's 6 a.m. in Sadana Forest, somewhere in the Indian province of Tamil Nadu. When it was first started, Oroville looked much like this, a vast swathe of barren land under a blazing sun. When we came here, there was no grass at all. It was just this type of soil. And now it's, the grass is coming and the trees are doing pretty well, you know, for uh, after being five months totally dry, six months totally dry. Aviram was the CEO of an Israeli pharmaceutical company. Six years ago, he gave up everything and decided to dedicate himself, along with a few other volunteers, to the reforestation of Oroville's last piece of untouched land. The community's members have chosen a radically alternative way of life. All electricity comes from solar energy, and no one consumes more than 50 litres of water per day. The aim is to live in harmony with nature, and to practice in everyday life a new kind of collective living. There's a lot of planning that goes into making the meals. Yep. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately it's my responsibility to make lunch all week. Oh, so, during the entire week? Yeah, well? the entire week. Yeah. There's other, there's a breakfast chef, a lunch chef for the whole week, and then people sign up for making dinner shifts. So it's a good system, it works. For 40 years, men and women have planted trees to make a little shade and fulfill the dream of Mira Alfasa, known as the mother, wife of the Indian philosopher Sri Aurobindo. In 1968, she shares a vision she has had with a handful of pioneers who have travelled from Europe. To build a city whose inhabitants will be free from religious, political and hierarchical barriers. Everybody has their own interpretation, their own understanding of what this vision is. You know, there is not a right or wrong interpretation. It's just that people understand it differently and they do different things out of uh, very good will and, and uh, purest of, uh, you know, intentions. They do different things and it's, that's the beauty of Oroville, the diversity. Thanks to the Orovillians, a jungle was born out of the wasteland. 2,000 inhabitants live here, scattered through 100 communities made up of people from 40 different countries. Rising from the center is the Maturimandir. It is not a temple, but a place for meditation and the town's symbol. 
Aurevillians share a charter to achieve the distant objective of unifying humanity, but also a desire to turn their lives into daily experiments that keep that ideal alive. At the CSR, or Centre for Scientific Research, scientists, university graduates and the self-taught work with very scant means on alternative energies. They test innovations aimed at giving power to the community, such as solar heaters or bicycles to generate electricity. And this is for a community which has uh, 12 people. And so we've done a little calculation and seen how much energy is required for running it over 24 hours period. And uh, we see that we need to store a certain amount of energy. And we can get it by uh, 12 people pedaling for roughly 15 to 20 minutes per day. Voilà, donc là, il y a le champ électromagnétique lumineux que ce petit appareil euh, reconvertit en, en ondes sonores, en fait. Donc, constamment, euh, cette musique imprègne l'eau quand elle est dans le conteneur et on a l'information euh, sonore et lumineuse dans l'eau. By playing Beethoven to his water fountains, Bhagwan Das has taken the experimental approach to its apex. He calls his water treatment dynamization. On a fait un petit système avec le euh, vortex euh, qui permet de définir aussi euh, euh, l'eau à travers les vortex et les turbulences, qui est une chose de très importante au niveau d'une dynamisation de, de l'eau naturellement, en fait, hein, ce que font les rivières, les océans. Et maintenant, il y a des recherches sur comment euh, peut-être dépolluer l'eau à travers des vortex. I, I feel Orville is, is very open to new ideas, uh, to experiment uh, different means without, uh, I don't know, without any restrictions, without any, you know, bureaucracy, without anything. So it's, it's, a, it's a great open platform for anything and people are ready to accept new ideas and new ways. So, um, and for me, to apply one's knowledge in actually the field, not, not so much in the lab conditions, but taking it out from the lab condition into the field. And that's what interested me, and so this is the best place to do that. Dynamized water and the CSR's inventions are available for free for any Aurevillian. But Alok, Bagwandas and the rest of the community don't really receive a wage for their work. Instead, the town pays them 5,000 rupees a month, called a maintenance equivalent to around 80 euros. But this maintenance doesn't always cover the basic needs. To help the Aurevillians, the town's shops sell their products at cost price, and the community undertakes experiments in economic solidarity. The new Portus shop is part of such an experiment. The idea is simple. All of the 400 volunteers taking part in the project put up to 2,000 rupees a month, or around 30 euros, into the pot. They then buy things without seeing the prices. The experiment works if the volunteers manage to balance out the accounts of those who spend more with those who spend less. C'est une façon de, oui, d'enlever la consommation. D'un côté, ils ne voient pas les prix, et de l'autre côté, euh, ils doivent faire attention. Donc c'est une façon de descendre l'envie de consommer. Et c'est vrai que ça arrive euh, aux gens. Après le, le premier, le deuxième mois d'être ici, ils commencent à consommer moins. Donc tu consommes ce dont tu as besoin, pas ce dont tu veux. We don't want to have a communist system, but uh, we want to have, a, as we said, a system where the people who come here are, are taken care of and their needs are fulfilled. To obtain the means to be able to satisfy the needs of all its inhabitants, the town has had to set up export-oriented commercial units. Shradanjali, a decorative handicraft shop, is part of this more conventional economic sector. I arrived in Auroville in 78. Auroville was in a very difficult material condition of really not having enough um, to sustain itself, food, um, money to just be able to grow. And therefore, the need was of um, making units which would be able to help fund the activities of our river. Commercial units are supposed to hand over a third of their profit to the community. In fact, the average contribution is 62%, and 
and some units donate everything. This is the case for Maroma, an incense factory founded by Paul Pinton. This unit is vital for paying the maintenance of Aurovillians, but also for financing scientific research and farming units. En faisant cela, on a l'immense privilège de, de participer, je veux dire, à l'élément moteur de Roville, qui, qui sont les hommes et les femmes de Roville. One is not doing it for oneself. One is not doing it for a personal gain, in any way. Um, the unit belongs to Auroville. If you have invested in the building or in the land or whatever, it also belongs to Auroville. The profits generated go to Auroville. Um, you put in your passion, your creation. You run it. You have full freedom to run it, but it doesn't belong to you. Quand on, on, on vient à Auroville, on abandonne l'idée de posséder. On ne possède pas sa maison. On ne possède pas l'entreprise que l'on crée. Il n'y a donc pas de rémunération du capital. On ne travaille pas pour gagner sa vie. Donc il n'y a pas de rémunération du travail. Donc les deux piliers de l'économie classique sont déjà par terre. Donc ça a forcément des conséquences. Et le style de vie que nous cherchons à trouver, il est fondé sur un, le don de soi. The alternative society embodied by Auroville has an undeniable power of attraction, especially on young people weary of the West and Indians in search of a new spirituality. This should result in attracting people and skills useful for the township's growth in order to reach another long-term objective, to grow from 2,000 inhabitants up to 50,000. Before becoming an Aurovillian, the guest has to find a suitable job and attend a series of interviews during which they explain their aims and motivations for coming to Auroville. Then they become a newcomer. After a one-year probation period, they will be able to join the community once and for all. annonce qui demandait des volontaires pour euh, travailler à la radio avec un, une liste en fait de connaissances. Ces connaissances donc je les, je les avais et ça m'a intéressé, ça m'a attiré et j'ai regardé où c'était, c'était donc Auroville en Inde. Avant tout c'est quand même un endroit où on travaille ici, où on fait quelque chose pour la communauté puisque c'est comme ça que ça doit fonctionner une communauté normalement. Et donc euh, on a une période de test où on vient euh, montrer ce qu'on sait faire. Yeah, I try and spend uh, three to four nights here. Basically, I'm from Chennai and I'm going to settle in Auroville. I want to be a newcomer, so this, this, this transition which I'm making, I'm making it gradually because uh, we need money to stay here and uh, I'll be coming after two years and then I'll be just working for Auroville and staying in Auroville. So now I'm actually you know, putting all my energies in the city where I'm going to stay, so it's for myself also. Every month, Auroville has to turn down newcomers like Uriel and Antin, since the town is unable to offer enough accommodation, and its growth is hampered by a lack of funds. Despite moral support from UNESCO and the help of the Indian government, as well as donations made by private individuals which complement the revenue generated by Aurovillians themselves, the city is literally being built brick by brick. What it will finally look like can only be seen on scale models. The community is filled with small farms aimed at satisfying Auroville's needs. On a small piece of land at Buddha's Garden, around 15 volunteers work according to the strictest principles of organic farming. This mode of production demands a large workforce and lots of investment, both of which are hard to obtain in Auroville, thus restricting agricultural production. There isn't one farm in Auroville that's, that's had a proper investment, with the possible exception of Annapurna. But that's over a huge long time. I mean, this is over, I mean, Annapurna's been there since almost the beginning. And, um, but I mean, there's never been where, a farm where we say, right, we're going to put this investment in and we're going to really make a productive farm. There's no, what annoys me always, no economic plan. There's nothing like trying to, to, to build, to, to grow, to, to, to make things happen in a more uh, 
um, organized way. It's very much on the individual, on, on what kind of money is available. It's, it's, it's very much like that. So after this, I never know if I ever get money again. Annapurna, the biggest farm in Oroville, is unable to develop and diversify its crops. In this remote part of the township, it's difficult to recruit volunteers. As a result, the farm is handled by three Orovillians who work with 20 Tamil workers from the neighbouring villages. I think that when people came to Oroville, I mean, there basically wasn't anything here. And um, food was, was quite an issue, really. And so anybody who came to Oroville in the very beginning planted trees and grew food because that was what was needed. Now, as the sort of green revolution took hold and food, there was more food, it was much cheaper. I think people just lost interest in it. And because as I said, it's a very hard job. You know, and, and I mean, what I find is that people have very romantic notions about coming and working on the land and doing all that sort of thing. But actually, you know, when you go out every day, most people don't want to do that. They want to do something a bit more glamorous. When the jungle dissolves to reveal typical images of the more modest Indian way of life, you know that the invisible border separating Oroville from its Tamil neighbours has been crossed. The local population is around 45,000 people and 4,000 of them come to work every day in the community. The advantages are obvious. Oroville benefits from a cheap workforce, which is much needed for the development of its economic activities. In turn, Oroville ensures that the village's jobs are secure and that wages stay higher than elsewhere. Besides, Oroville's presence stimulates tourism and therefore helps the local economy grow. It was second shop when I opened this there were no many shops and now Oro will much much de develop much much develop before but it was very different the population in surrounding villages is exploding, and this is one of the rare places in India not witnessing rural flight. Relationships between the township and the Tamil people aren't always perfect. According to some villagers, Oroville is ungrateful to those who helped build it. <laughs> Those people come here for a job. They have not great interest in Oroville, although they find certain things interesting and over years you build a personal relationship. Of course, some of them here are 20 years, so there's a certain trust, there's a certain faith. Uh, not always easy because their values are their values, my values are my values, which of course you try to understand each other, but still you step on each other's toes sometimes. Oroville's objective of self-sufficiency is constantly challenged. There is a broader dependency on top of the local one. The food which Oroville has to buy from outside, often produced by the biochemical farming industry, is a striking example. Without it, the community kitchen that feeds half of Oroville cannot function properly. This slowness of the city's material evolution is mainly down to organisational problems. By wanting to start from scratch and favouring consensus-based decisions over democratically voted laws, Orovillians have unwittingly opted for organic growth, free yet faltering. Trying to make plans during residence assemblies with everyone entitled to have their say leads to acute headaches. The dissonance between Oroville and the India in which it is rooted seems overwhelming. 
Only India's age-old culture, where seeking spiritual enlightenment is second nature, would accept men and women in search of an inner evolution. But the frenzy of a changing India, rushing headlong into capitalism, yet still surrounded by as many gods as before, contrasts more than ever with a small community that is trying to start everything over with a clean slate, free of all rules and social conditioning. Sur toute activité, de l'école à la route, au restaurant, à la maison, il fallait ensemble s'entendre. Et comment ça se fait qu'à travers ces difficultés, malgré ces difficultés, ils sont restés Donc le mystère, c'est ce qui les a amenés et qui les amène tous les jours. Ils doivent s'interroger, ils le font, ils le disent. Est-ce que je dois rester ici Qu'est-ce que je fais ici Et le lendemain, ils restent. On ne peut pas réussir une utopie comme ça. On ne peut que l'expérimenter, on ne peut que l'explorer. Et donc on a des réussites partielles et on a des échecs partiels et on doit vivre avec cette relativité-là. Il faut admettre que l'on ne sait pas comment Auroville va se faire. Tant qu'on croit qu'on sait, on est dans la cacophonie parce que chacun sait d'une manière différente. Et c'est important de se dire, ben on ne sait pas, alors on va chercher ensemble, on va explorer ensemble. Il y a eu cette décision de rester, confronter le the power or go to India or go to uh, the uh, south of France or go to the back of Australia or start a community in America or something like that or and search also inside because that was another thing do you keep action outside or do you go inside and in the end that's part of the Oriville story where we did go inside around you know the age of 30 something I found out that I'm not very happy the way I am you know I'm I'm not uh, fulfilled I'm doing I'm succeeding in what I'm doing it's all fine I have the money I have everything but it's not it's not really touching my heart what I'm doing it still feels to me a good place to be somehow there's still this feel of space there's still this kind of uh, where I can live a certain kind of dream where I don't have to be, be professional I mean have to behave like like an adult or something I can just be here and just kind of live and I'm not encapsulated in all kind of rules and and and, and uh, um, yeah uh, basically it's just somehow the spirit can still have a chance here I feel I think Oroville is in our hearts anyway but but we actually have to go wider you know we're not just building Oroville in India we're actually building it all over the world and we have sort of little mini Oroville's. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know, but I, I, I think that the, I think that the time, I mean, everybody seems very keen on building this city, but the city is, is much more than just what the bricks and mortar and roads and stuff that we do here. Oroville has reached adolescence. Having grown over the years, it now attracts tourists from all over India who come to see this strange set of buildings, the red footpaths, and especially the Matrimandir, which does not always succeed in reflecting the ideals which led to its creation. Oroville has started to open up to the world. It has put up its wind turbines in Micronesia. Dynamized water is donated to Tibetan refugee camps. Its solar panels are being sold to the Indian government. Never before has the community's know-how been so well exported. Yet the ideals, Human unity, the rise of a higher conscience, seem buried in the jungle. Is the world ignoring Oroville's most universal qualities? Is its essence really imperceptible? At least Aurovillians still have hope, as well as the certainty that their doors remain open, while others have them shut.